In 3.6, we're going to start talking about the relationship of two lines to each other. So instead of just graphing one and talking about describing that line or what it's going to look like based off of the definition, now we're going to look picture-wise, comparing two, and even just looking at the definitions. Comparing these two, what are they going to look like? How are they related to each other? So the first few cases that we want to talk about. Three different possibilities when we're graphing a pair of linear equations. So two in this case, we could look at more. So, three different options. First one, the graphs are exactly the same. That can happen. What else? The graphs intersect at exactly one point. Or, the graphs don't touch at all. And if they don't touch, what label do we give to those? If they're changing at the same rate at the same time, they're never touching, we call those parallel. Parallel lines never touch. So we're going to look at those three different cases, just so you can see um, a graph representation of what we're talking about. So the first one, I uh, roughly sketched it, and you have them given to you. We only have one line that's graphed, and I forgot to put the second label on there. But those two definitions are equivalent. It's graphing the same line. So we have infinitely many solutions, because if I pick this point on this line over here, it's also going to satisfy uh, this line at the same time, because it is the same. The definitions just look a little bit different, because this one is this one times 2 by a factor of 2. So in this case, we have infinitely many solutions. solutions, because they're at the exact same lines, lying right on top of each other. Second one, these aren't perpendicular, but they're pretty close. Mine looks like they're perpendicular, but they're not. They're crossing at one specific point. So only at that point can I satisfy this line and that one at the exact same time. So we have one solution here. They cross at exactly one point. And then the last case. Okay, we have these definitions, and their slopes are the same. They're changing at the same rate at the exact same time. So they're never going to be touchy. So we have no solutions. No solutions since parallel. Okay, because if I choose a point on this line, randomly right here, I'm never going to be able to satisfy uh, this second line. Never touchy. So it's easy to see when we have graphs, pictures of these relationships. If we don't have the pictures, we can draw them, which we will do for the first example. But eventually, we want to be able just to look at the definitions and talk about how the two lines are related. So the first example, graph and describe the relationship between this line and this line. So let's graph them first of all. They're in the y equals mx plus b form point slope, so we can pluck off. My y-intercept happens at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And from there, I move according to my slope, what? Up 2 over 1. Or I could have chosen down 2, back 1. That will also lie on that same line. Get out your straight edge. I'm not going to. It takes too much time. And the second one, I'll always label them we have more than one line drawn on a coordinate plane. And the second one, it's crossing through the point 0, negative 3, 3, and from there I'm moving the same slope, up 2, over 1, up 2, over 1. So with your straight edge, your pictures will be a little bit prettier than mine, but it'll get the point across. How are they related? They're parallel, so they aren't going to have any solutions. So let's just talk about them. Slopes. What about the slopes? We have the same values on m, the coefficient on x on the front. So that tells us they're changing at the same rate at the exact same time. So we've got the same slopes. But what about their y-intercepts? I've got 1 up here at 0, 5. 1 down here at 0 minus 3. So they're changing at the same rates, but they're crossing the y-axis in different spots. 
So the y-intercepts are different. And again, we don't have any solutions. They're never touching. They're parallel. They never touch, which means they're parallel, which means we have no solutions. If we were looking at these two as a system, I can't choose a point that's going to satisfy both at the same time like I could if I was looking at these two as a system. They have one solution. Where they're crossing, these don't have any. So we're going to hone in on parallel lines, talk about them specifically, then we'll look at a few other special cases. But at the end, down here, when we graph those two parallel lines, we had a few conclusions about the different pieces of a line, of that definition. So we want to kind of sum that up again. Parallel non-vertical lines, because our slope is undefined if it's vertical, they have the same slope, but different what? Different y-intercepts. Okay. Parallel horizontal lines have what kind of equations? So I could have two that are parallel and horizontal. We have the same slope, slope is zero, and we have different y-intercepts. So our equations have to be y equals some value, y equals some different value that's separate. And if we turn them and we're looking at vertical ones, vertical, slopes are undefined. We don't have any y-intercepts. What do we have? X-intercepts everywhere. So it's going to be x equal to some value, x equal to some different value for those two different lines. Again, they're never touching. So we want to be able to show algebraically the relationship between lines without having to draw pictures all the time. Save us some time. So first example, algebraically determine whether the graphs of the lines y equals minus 3x plus 4 and 6x plus 2y is minus 10 are parallel. So to be able to compare and talk about the slopes and the y-intercepts, they have to be in the same form, in that point-slope form. So the first one's good. We can plug off the slope and the y-intercept, but the second one we have to do a little bit of work and solve for slope-intercept form first. So let's take that one and work on him. I want y on its own. I need to subtract 6x from both sides, divide by 2 everywhere, so y is minus 3x minus 5. So now that we have um, the same form, okay, our first equation and the second one, we can compare between the two. So let's talk. Do they have the same slope? Yes. Same constant on the front of x and different y-intercepts. So the relationship between these two lines they're parallel. So we have same slope and different y-intercept. So these are parallel, parallel lines. Now let's just pretend that we had the same slope and the same y-intercept. What about that case? It's going to be the exact same line, right, right on top of each other but they might start off with different forms. So they'll have infinitely many solutions then. But in this case, how many solutions do we have? None, if we're looking at it as a system, because they're never touching. So one for you, just kidding, two for you. Determine whether the graphs of each pair of equations are parallel. First example, we needed to get them both into that slope-intercept form. So looking at the first one, what had to happen? Subtract 3x from both sides. Divide or multiply by negative, so we got y is 3x plus 5. Solve the first one for the slope-intercept form. Second one is pretty simple. We just have to add 3x to both sides. So what about that relationship between these two lines? They have the same slope, different y-intercepts, so the lines are parallel. Good. Pretty straightforward. With the second one, we want to do the same. Solve for that y equals mx plus b form. So we've basically dealt with this case. Add 3x to both sides. 
So that one is isolated for y. This one, we have to divide both sides by minus 2. So y is minus 3 halves x minus 1. So in this case, what relationships do they have? We don't know, but we know that they're not parallel because we have different slopes and different y-intercepts. So these are not parallel. And we'll learn later on about if they're not parallel, if they're not perpendicular, what are they looking like? But you could also graph. Graph the two lines and observe what's happening. Do they cross at all? They will in one specific spot. 